Good morning, friend. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky, if you're new. Today we are going to make five different breakfast casseroles that can be made the night before, sit in the refrigerator overnight, and you can bake them the morning of. So these are gonna be perfect for Christmas morning or any holiday morning where you need something quick and easy the morning of, and you don't wanna be in the kitchen doing any prep. We've got some sweet ones, we've got some savory ones, we have ones with bacon, we have ones with sausage, we have ones that are vegetarian. And the first thing I'm gonna do to get started to make these breakfast casseroles is I'm going to get eight slices of bacon in one of these pots. I've got them preheating. I'm gonna go ahead and just slice them before we get them in the pan so that they will already be pre-crumbled in the pan. In this pan, I'm gonna get some breakfast sausage cooking. It's already starting to smell like Christmas morning in my house. Growing up, we didn't have bacon very often. It was usually bacon and sausage was for a special occasion and Christmas was definitely a special occasion. So one of the breakfast casseroles we're gonna be making has potatoes in it. We need to roast the potatoes first. So I just preheated the oven to 350, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and preheat it to 400. And let's get these potatoes in the oven and roasting while our meat is cooking on the stove. So I'm gonna get a cutting board out here. We don't have a ton of veggie prep for these different recipes, but we do need to prep some onions and some mushrooms because one of them is going to be a mushroom and spinach and onion croissant breakfast casserole, which sounds divine. So I went ahead this morning before I got ready for the day and I peeled some potatoes. You could probably substitute in this recipe frozen hash browns and that would make this recipe go a lot quicker. But in the garden, I grew quite a few potatoes that I wanna make sure that we use up. So I am going to go ahead and take this extra step to pre-dice some potatoes. These happen to be russet potatoes, but I'm sure you could use whatever kind of potato you have on hand or that is your family's favorite. I'm gonna do these into a pretty small dice. The cool thing about if you cut your own potatoes for a recipe like this is you get to decide how big or small you want the potatoes. The bacon is cooked to the way that Josh and I like. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this bacon out of this pan. I'm gonna turn the stove off. Our sausage is almost done as well. The bacon is for the potato recipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this same skillet that I just cooked the bacon in and we're going to roast the potatoes in the skillet. We can use some of this bacon grease to roast the potatoes and that's gonna make them taste just divine. I don't think we'll need all this bacon grease and so I'm gonna go ahead and put some in this jar and we can use it to saute some of the other vegetables we're gonna saute in a little bit. So I've got a couple tablespoons left in there. We'll just get these potatoes right into this skillet. I'm gonna add just a touch more of the bacon grease. I'm gonna start by seasoning these potatoes with some onion powder, black pepper, Salt, garlic. If you're new, my garlic powder's green because it's homegrown and it's got garlic scapes, which is a part of the garlic that you can preserve that happens to be green, but it tastes just like garlic. So now I'm gonna toss these potatoes in all of that beautiful bacon drippings. This recipe is written to cook the potatoes on the stove. I don't have the best luck cooking potatoes on the stove. I have better luck cooking them in the oven. So that's why I decided just to preheat the oven and get these roasting in the oven. 
So now I think our sausage is done. We have an absolute beautiful color to our sausage. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this sausage out of the skillet. And I'm gonna get it on a paper towel just to soak up any extra drippings that can be soaked up. We've got some really nice brown color on the sausage, which is exactly what we want. I will link all these recipes down below. Two of them are from family. One of them is the casserole that my mother-in-law makes every year for Christmas, and I know that one's absolutely delicious. One of them is from another family friend, and then three of them are brand new to me that I have never made. Growing up, my family, we never had breakfast casserole for Christmas, but I know that's really traditional for a lot of families. What my mom always makes for Christmas is cinnamon rolls, and she would always make the cinnamon rolls the night before, and she would let them <laughs> rise in the garage where it was really cold, so they would rise really slowly, and then breakfast morning, she would pop the cinnamon rolls in the oven, and those would cook while we were opening our stockings. And then we would always cook sausage and eggs and have like a breakfast scramble type thing. But I thought it would be fun to try these breakfast casserole recipes because even if you, it's still traditional for your family to have cinnamon rolls on Christmas because it's not Christmas at our family without cinnamon rolls, you could have a savory breakfast casserole and then your sweet cinnamon rolls and it would be the perfect combination. That's what we do at my mother-in-law's house. So we're gonna see if we can find a family favorite of Josh and I's for our Christmas morning. So for the Gruyere mushroom and spinach casserole, we need an onion, diced, and eight ounces of mushrooms. I did wash these mushrooms already. And I'm just gonna slice them thinly. You could probably chop them if you wanted. This is going to be the vegetarian one. And all of these recipes, you know, one of them calls for sausage, but I'm sure you could substitute bacon. One of them says you could use sausage or ham. I think all of them, this Gruyere one, if you wanted to add sausage or bacon to it, I'm sure you could. And that would be divine mushrooms, spinach, sausage, Gruyere cheese, croissants. I mean, yum. I'm gonna use the same skillet we cook the sausage in to cook our mushrooms and onions and that will deglaze the bottom of the pan and we'll get all that yummy goodness into our breakfast casserole. I'm gonna add a little salt. The salt helps draw out some of the moisture so that we can get all those brown bits off the bottom of the pan. This next recipe is French toast casserole using croissants. And I think that this would be the perfect combination if you wanted to make this recipe with one of the savory ones. If you don't like to make or don't wanna make cinnamon rolls for breakfast, you can kinda get that sweet cinnamon flavor with the decadence of a croissant as a breakfast casserole without the work that goes into making cinnamon rolls or croissants. One of my goals this winter is actually to learn how to make croissants from scratch. But for this recipe, I just got these at the store. These are delicious croissants that are gonna make, I think, a delicious breakfast casserole. I love the idea of using croissants in these recipes that we're gonna be making today. We have three recipes that are gonna be using croissants today. Or no, we have two recipes using croissants, two recipes using a rustic loaf of bread, and one using potatoes. So I'm just cubing these croissants. I have nine here. Get them in the bottom of this baking dish. This one is gonna come together super quickly because there is no prep or cooking or anything on the stove that we need to do. The rest of them are gonna come together actually really quickly because we've already done most of the prep for them, cooking the meat, the mushrooms, the onions, Now we're gonna make our custard and we need nine eggs total. To our eggs, we're gonna add cinnamon, 
freshly grated nutmeg. A good splash of vanilla. A quarter cup of white sugar and a quarter cup of brown sugar. One cup of whole milk and two cups of half and half. If you aren't from the United States, half and half is half cream, half milk. So here you could substitute two cups of regular milk and one cup of cream, and that would give you the same thing. So now we're gonna mix this together. And this is our custard. We have one more ingredient. Oh, you know what? The recipe does not call for this, but I'm gonna add it if I can find it. And that is salt because anytime I cook anything sweet, I like to add salt to balance out the flavors. It enhances the sweetness. So now we're going to mix this together. This next step is optional and that's to sprinkle about a half a cup of chopped pecans on the top. You could use walnuts or pecans, whatever you have, or you could leave the nuts out altogether. Now we're gonna pour our custard mixture over the top of our croissants. I'm gonna use my whisk to kind of push the croissants down into that custard to soak up all that beautifulness. This one did not even take 10 minutes from start to finish. It probably took about five or six, so easy easily whipped up on Christmas Eve night. Pop it in the refrigerator overnight so that it has time to soak up all the custard and then we will bake this in the morning. So if you didn't wanna make cinnamon rolls but you wanted that cinnamon decadent breakfast, this just might be your recipe. Our mushrooms and onions are now done so we now have all the components of our casseroles done, so these are gonna come together really quickly. Our potatoes have about five minutes, I just checked on them, and those will be done as well. So let's go ahead and whip up the mushroom and onion and gruyere. Oh, you know what I need to do? I almost forgot. This recipe calls for some spinach. So I'm gonna turn the stove back on, and I'm gonna saute up some spinach, get that cooked down, and then we will have all of our components done. That'll cook down to nothing. While this spinach is sauteing, I'm gonna go ahead and grate up some Gruyere cheese for this recipe. My mom and I went shopping together and we found this cheese and it's a Gruyere cheddar blend and I wanna give it a try. Mmm. That's gonna go delicious with this breakfast casserole. Now that our spinach is nice and wilted, we're going to go ahead and make our casserole right in this so we don't have to dirty up another dish. But before we can do that, we need to cut up croissants for this as well. So we're gonna just dice them up just like we did for the sweet recipe. Once I get all these diced in there, then what I'm gonna do is stir the croissants in with the mushroom mixture and spinach mixture so it's evenly combined throughout the dish. So now it's time to go ahead and make our custard. So we're gonna start with eggs just like we did before. I'm 
Now we're gonna add whole milk, heavy cream, salt, pepper, onion powder, oh, sorry, this is garlic powder, and some freeze-dried parsley. Our Gruyere cheese, we're gonna whisk this together. I'm gonna get the lid on this and we can get this in the refrigerator and we've got one more breakfast casserole done. How delicious would this casserole be with the last one we just made? Sweet, savory, yum. And if you wanted to add bacon or sausage to this, I think it would be delicious as well. So in the fridge and let's get going on the next one. I think our potatoes should be done at this point. Oh yeah, those look perfect. So I'm gonna take these out because we're gonna bake this tomorrow. All of these are overnight casseroles. I don't wanna put the egg mixture that I'm gonna make directly onto these potatoes because it will cook the eggs. If This would be a good one if you wanna make the day of. Make up the egg mixture, pour it on top, pop it back in the oven. But we're gonna bake these tomorrow. So I'm gonna set this over here and I'm gonna let it cool while we get going on my mother-in-law's recipe. So I'm gonna turn the oven off because now we don't need the oven any longer. This next recipe I've been having every Christmas since Josh and I have been together and it's my mother-in-law's and it is so easy to whip together. I mean, I've never made it before, but just reading, I've actually got a picture of her handwritten recipe card. I will type that up for you down below, but I know it's delicious because I've had it. So my mother-in-law always makes this Christmas morning and then I'm usually the one that's responsible for making the cinnamon rolls. So I know that this breakfast casserole goes really well with cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning. So the first thing I'm gonna add to our bowl, we're gonna make our custard in this bowl. I do have mild, I wanted to double check I didn't buy hot. These are mild green chilies, so it kinda adds a little bit of just a nice different flavor to it. A good pinch of salt, pepper, and of course you can season the salt and pepper to your taste. Let me double check how much dry mustard. One teaspoon dry mustard. This is a half teaspoon, that's why it's heaping. We're gonna get that in there. We're gonna add eight large eggs, two cups of milk. Cheddar cheese. We're gonna whisk this all together. And that's our custard right there. To this, we're gonna add one pound of breakfast sausage. Now you can use ham, breakfast sausage, or bacon for this recipe, or you could keep it vegetarian. This recipe calls for bread instead of croissants. And we're gonna get this cubed up. This is a rustic loaf. My mother-in-law texted me and said she really likes to make it with sourdough too, but this is not a sourdough loaf. We're gonna add our bread to our custard. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this one. I probably should have sprayed all of them, but I kind of forgot, so it'll work. It'll be just fine. We're gonna cover this and this is going into the fridge. This next recipe, I'm really excited to try. This is a recipe from a family friend. I was telling her that I wanted to experiment with some different breakfast casseroles and she said this is her family's favorite 
So I thought I'd give it a try. This recipe is also another handwritten one. She texted me the picture, so I will type it up for you. And we need to just start with sausage or bacon, or you could use ham. And then we've got our bread here. This is the same kind of rustic loaf. I'm gonna cube this up just like I've cubed the rest of the breads that we've been using today. And this one doesn't call for as many eggs. This one is a little bit lighter on the eggs. It only calls for three eggs, but it's got a really interesting ingredient in it that I've never had in a breakfast casserole that I think is going to make it delicious, and that's Worcestershire sauce. I love Worcestershire sauce, and I've never ever thought about putting it in a breakfast casserole. So what do you guys have on Christmas morning? What is your, or whatever your holiday is that you celebrate, what is your family's go-to easy breakfast? So I've got that cubed. I think what I'm gonna do is make the custard first before I add any more ingredients, and I need to look at my recipe. So this one calls for three cups of milk, and it doesn't say whether it should be whole milk or what type of milk. So I have whole milk here, so this is what we're gonna use today. And I think that's just perfect with that carton. So three cups of that. And then it calls for minced dried onion. I don't have that, but I have some freeze dried onion powder, so we're gonna add that. Next, we will get our three eggs in here. Whoop! Don't want that in there. Salt and pepper. This one also calls for a teaspoon of dry mustard powder and some Worcestershire sauce. Calls for one pound of cheese, a mixture of cheddar cheese and Swiss cheese. I don't know how much this is, so I'm assuming about one cup is eight ounces, so that's what we're gonna go with. That's all the ingredients for the custard, so we'll whisk this together. Now we're gonna add our bread. And I'm gonna fold in the bread into the custard mixture. I think the Swiss cheese in this is gonna be delicious. I think it's kind of awesome how a lot of these recipes have such similar ingredients, but with a few tweaks, like adding Swiss cheese instead of Gruyere cheese or cheddar cheese, or adding a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, or a can of diced green chilies. You can really change the flavor profile of a simple breakfast casserole. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease the bottom of this pan because this recipe does say to do that. I'm gonna stir this one more time, make sure we've got everything kind of evenly distributed. Just like with the other recipes, we're going to put some foil on the top of this, get this in the refrigerator to kind of marry all those flavors, get the bread to absorb all that beautiful custard. And we've got another delicious smelling. I'm so excited about this one. I think this is gonna be really good. I think that Worcestershire really is gonna bring this over the top. So into the refrigerator, it goes. The last casserole we're gonna prep before we get to bake them to give them a taste test is our potato casserole. So I just put our eight pre-cooked slices of bacon in here. Whoop, throwing eggs. <laughs> and now I'm gonna get eight eggs in here. Well, I was gonna to try to get eight eggs in here, but it looks like I just cracked it right onto my cutting board. So what I'm gonna do is slide my cutting board to the edge, use my bench scraper, scrape it in there. I'm gonna go wash my cutting board. You know what I should probably do? I should wait. Well, I'll go wash it now. 
Is it traditional in your family to have cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning? That was always a staple. It will probably always be a staple in my family, or tradition, I should say, not staple, on Christmas morning. And sometimes when you have a tradition that you've always had, it just seems like everybody has that on Christmas. But what do you guys have on Christmas? One thing that my husband, my husband's Dutch, and one thing that they have every Christmas, not for breakfast, but just as a dessert, is a dessert called Bonquette. And I had never heard of it. It's something that he's had every single Christmas until we met, and it is delicious. And it is now one of my favorites. That's kind of the fun thing about families coming together is you can share in the traditions. So now to this, we need to add one and a half cups of cheddar cheese and one and a half cups of Monterey Jack cheese. And it looks like I used all of my cheddar cheese. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and substitute a little bit of the cheddar Gruyere because that's what I already have pre-shredded. And I don't have any other cheddar cheese in my house, so that is what we're gonna use. So now we need to season this with pepper and salt. And this one also has dry mustard. I've never put dry mustard in breakfast casserole before until today, and now I put it in three of them. My dog is patiently waiting at my feet for me to drop something, which he knows will happen. So there's one cup of heavy cream, and then this recipe calls for, I did not realize it until just now, one small onion diced, but it does not say we need to cook it, which is good because I don't feel like cooking it now. <laughs> and so this is working out perfect. So these are homegrown onions, so they're a little on the small side, so this is gonna be perfect for this recipe. I know I'm using a bread knife to chop this onion, but it's already dirty, so I might as well not dirty up another knife. And we're gonna mix this together. I'm gonna go ahead and add some freeze-dried parsley just to add some pretty color to this. So because the potatoes are already cooked, this is not gonna take very long tomorrow to bake because all we have to do is set the custard, melt the cheese, and brown the top. I think that if you were to put raw potatoes and try to cook the potatoes, the custard, and everything all at once, the potatoes would not have time to fully cook. This recipe does say to transfer all of this into a nine by 13 baking dish, but we already cooked the bacon in here. We cooked the potatoes in here. We might as well, this is a heat proof baking dish or pot. We might as well not dirty up another dish. It's gonna be pretty. This is a pretty, what is this? A frying pan skillet? It's pretty enough that this can be the serving plate or the serving platter and the vessel to cook it in. No need to dirty up another dish. I'm gonna cover this and get this in the fridge. I'm gonna bake these casseroles at 350 for about 35 minutes covered and then an additional about 10 to 15 minutes uncovered. Oh my goodness, friend. If only you could smell my house right now. It's cheesy, it's rich, it smells absolutely incredible. I have here two of the casseroles that are done. This is our mushroom Gruyere spinach. Look at how that's puffed up so beautifully. So yummy. So I'm gonna set this here. I text my sister-in-law, she had her baby, and I told her what I made today, and I said, what ones sound good to you? So she wants the French toast croissant, and she wants my mother-in-law's breakfast casserole, the one we have at my mother-in-law's every Christmas. And so she's gonna get two of these casseroles. This one is not quite done. This is the potato one that needs a little bit more time. Now my sister is pregnant and she's got two toddlers. So this on my way to my sister-in-law's, I'm gonna drop this one off for her. 
so she doesn't have to worry about breakfast for the next few days. Oh my goodness, look at that. How beautiful that right there is Christmas morning worthy. So divine. I think the two that have the croissants, I mean, how decadent is that? Now this is my mother-in-law's recipe and this one is so good. You could smell the chilies coming out of this. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. Look at that, it's bubbly and ooey and gooey. I'm also gonna bring a thing of paper plates and napkins to my sister-in-law that just had the baby so she doesn't have to worry about dishes. So she's gonna get these two casseroles and do they just smell and look absolutely divine. I know my sister won't mind if I just take a little corner piece here to give this a taste test. I'll put the foil back on so it stays warm. I know what my mother-in-law's tastes like and it's delicious, but I wanna taste the two with the croissant. I'm just gonna get a little taste test out of this one as well. I have a little bit of each one of the breakfast casserole so we can do a taste test and see which one I think is the best. The potato one is not done, so it's still in the oven. The first one I'm gonna start with is going to be the one with the rustic bread, the Swiss cheese, and Worcestershire sauce. And you can see on the ends, they got a little bit crispy and crunchy. And then on the inside, they're still really soft. And I love that combination of the crunchy edges and the soft center. Mm. Mm -hmm. That one was one of the most simple ones, flavor-wise. The Worcestershire was kind of like that little, oh, I'm gonna turn the oven off, it's warm. Was that little hint that kind of brought it over the top. That is really good, I will make that again. Now we're gonna try my mother-in-law's. This is the one with the chilies and sausage. The French, it's like a rustic loaf of bread. And then we'll try the two with the croissants. Mm-hmm. That one is so good. The chilies flavor is really powerful, not overwhelming, but it's amazing how you're not biting into chili really, but you can taste it throughout the whole casserole. And it adds a nice warmth and kind of a little bit of a different thing than a traditional breakfast casserole. Now we're gonna try the mushroom, croissant, and spinach. I'm so excited to try the croissant aspect of this breakfast casserole, and then we'll finish with something sweet. Mm. The croissant texture is fabulous. That has such rich, complex flavor. I would definitely make that again as well. If you don't like mushrooms, I know mushrooms can kind of be a hit or miss type thing. Substitute sausage or bacon for that with the spinach and the Gruyere cheese, fabulous. Now we're going to end it with the sweet, French toast croissant. Oh my goodness, the French toast croissant casserole is so decadent and delicious. If you don't have time to make cinnamon rolls, you don't want the mess that that can bring, make yourself this because that came together in less than 10 minutes. That was the fastest one to come together and it is phenomenal. I think what I would rank these would be the cinnamon roll French toast croissant, and then my mother-in-law's. This one I really like, but I think I would like it better without mushrooms and with sausage or bacon. This one is really, really good too. I don't know. They're all so good. And obviously the potato one is gonna be pretty delicious as well. It's potatoes and eggs and cheese, and it's hard to go wrong with those flavors. But this one, the croissant French toast, phenomenal. So thank you friends so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we experimented with some possibly new breakfast traditional casseroles. I know that at Christmas we'll have my mother-in-laws, but maybe Christmas morning here, Josh and I will try one of these new ones and I'm excited to be able to drop two of these off to my sister-in-law so she doesn't have to worry about cooking for a while. One to my sister and then one for Josh and I so I don't have to worry about cooking for a while. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you wanna watch a couple of my other videos, you can go watch those right there. The recipes will be linked down below if you want to try any of them. I'm so excited you're here with me today, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friends.